Hey everybody, it's Mr. Xditch here. Welcome back to another designer discourse video where I spend an hour talking around the houses with a cross stitch designer. It's quite a niche industry being involved in the world of cross stitch design, and so it's good to talk with people who are making a living out of it so that maybe it helps you with your cross stitch design process. And today we've got a great one. Today we're talking with Spanish cross stitch designer Melorize. She's a great designer, she's multi-talented, she's got a really unusual aesthetic and we have a really great conversation that not only talks about her creative process but also dives into how she uses social media for marketing purposes and a whole heap of other topics. Be sure to watch all the way to the end because right at the end of the video Mel gives us her one top tip for aspiring cross-stitch designers and it's a good one. Um, that's what I love about Mel. She's got a old head on young shoulders, an immense amount of talent, and I think you'll really enjoy this interview. So let's crack on. <laughs> let's um, start at the start where it is your name is Melorize. Melorize? Mel yeah, actually, yeah. Melodies. Melodies. My real name is actually. <gasps> <gasps> I wasn't. I thought because you know I remember when it said, "What is it? I am Melorize, mother of dragons, and all that." I was like, "I'm gonna <laughs> not find out whatever." Or you know, I'm privy. I'm like in a sanctum. I know your real name, but for the rest <laughs> of the world, I feel like I might just bleep that out for everyone's safety. Really. Okay. You know, it's like Banksy, everyone knows. You can put it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was just a conversation. I'll write that down. It's um, just a Melorize. I, when I created it, I didn't. I never thought I will use it that much that people will have to pronounce it. Mm. And in in English, it sounds good. It's like Melorize, but in Spanish, it's Melarice, and uh, people is like Melarice. This is so strange. And French is Melarize, and it's like, oh my god, it doesn't sound good in, at all. But well. Yeah, I, uh, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> full, full disclosure, I think pretty much when you say anything in Spanish, it sounds good. But that's like an English person's perspective, you know. The Spanish accent's a good one, you know. It depends. It yeah, depends. <laughs> it's true. Uh, and then, and then you're, there was something else I saw where you're like, Mel, arise, as in arise. Yeah, no, actually it's uh, I, I, the arise thing. Uh, it, it's uh, when I used to listen to Sepultura. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and I was like arise I was uh, I, I had it on my motorbike <laughs> with some flames um, and then when I got to Spain I started to, gra to be a graphic designer so I was arise graphic because mm -hmm. I, I, arise for me it's not only sepultura it's so this obsession I have to grow and develop or, and always growing not not be uh, no, never stop, you know, yeah. like yeah, stagnant. And then uh, rise graphic, I didn't like it anymore. And then someday, I think I did my MySpace and I did mail rise, yeah. And then it stayed. Okay. MySpace, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those are the days. Isn't doesn't Tom from MySpace own his own island somewhere now or something? What what? You know Tom. Everyone's friends with oh, yeah, Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's just. Like, I saw it. I saw it on Instagram one day. Yeah. <laughs> still going so so how did you how did you come to be so you're french but you live yes. in spain kind of french yes kind of french because i'm from new caledonia oh. it's, it's uh, close to australia but it's not australian it's french but in uh, pacific ocean oh okay yeah. <laughs> so because uh, i was going to be like oh i so see you just get on your bike you just ride to spain but clearly not how did no, you no, come no. to be in spain <laughs> Uh, I like flamenco. Of course. When I, and yeah, and when I was eighteen, my mother said, uh, "If you have the bachelor, um, I don't know, when you approve and you can go to study further, mm -hmm. uh, I pay you a travel to Spain." Because I was obsessed, I don't know why. And we came, and we finally stayed. So that was, uh, yeah. Then I'm in Spain from there. Uh -huh. And then. So how have you come to become a cross stitch designer? Because as you say, you you many other talents. Would you care to list them? 
Oh, I do too much thing, too many things. I should focus someday. But well, yeah, I think cross stitch it just appeared. I'm not that kind of people that uh, was really good at the cross stitching or embroidery or I, I never finished any petit point, you know, when I was mm. young. As soon as it was not perfect, I just draw a bit and start a new one or never finished any. Um and I don't know why, I, I was uh, just looking at pixel art and I wanted to do a gift for my mother-in-law because mm -hmm. uh, she makes a soup that is amazing, a Spanish soup. So I made the best soup uh, of the world, Prostige. Uh, and the, the, it was easy to do. And uh, the, what I felt when I gave it to her and it was so unique and it was really, you know, to, to uh, hurt. Mm. Uh, I wanted to do. I wanted to do another one, so I did one for my uh, boyfriend, which is actually my bestseller right now, the Dwight uh, from the Office. Mm -hmm. the, the, yeah. Uh, and then from there, I started to do really big, big ones just for me. Mm -hmm. And I was selling kits, uh, like, like, uh, like that kind of, you no, know, really easy, yeah, easy ones. Batman or that stuff, but it was not working in Spain. I was doing markets and people didn't understand what was cross stitch kit, what for, why is, mm. it, why is it 10 euros, you know, and it was super cheap. So I decided to focus on patterns and then I never stopped. So you started an Etsy store? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. when was that? Oof. I think my Etsy started like five years ago. Okay. But it's only two years ago when I decided to do only cross stitch patterns. Right. Mm. But so it's then, better to focus. Yeah. Speaking mm. of which, so you're also a freelance graphic designer and yeah. you're in a band. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, I, I, I can think about it. I don't know. <laughs> Got one well, now I'm, I just started a new job, uh, half uh, part time in a. Uh, audiovisual advertising agency to do spots. So I, I'm I'm an art director now. I, that's what I what I studied last year. So I'm doing These this too. kind of coalesce. That makes sense, though, right? It yeah, always yeah. feels like that you've just got a lot of art in you, and you can kind of even tell that, I guess, from your design aesthetic. Mm, just, they are strange, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's cool. You <laughs> Thank know, you. I think you can't uh, you can't second guess you. I think I'm trying to think how many patterns you've done. For the magazine, it's like three or four or something, and every one's I can't just remember. the last. Yeah. But they're, 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 they are not even similar, mm. right? Because for the magazine, when I go for the magazine, I go really freestyle, like really what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> and it's it's always a different point of my life, so it's you you will never know what will happen. Mm. On so, Etsy, I, I have to follow kind of a style, right? But uh, yeah. And on Etsy then, do you, I mean, are you aiming at a particular audience there? And yes. because, because the curious thing is, and it was something I was going to talk about later, but what the hell, like Spain, like cross stitch is global. Everyone does it in the world, but they have different flavors of it. And I think I'm right in thinking that Spain and France and stuff are quite traditional in their mindsets about cross stitch, right? Yeah. Traditional yeah. patterns and stuff like that. So are you finding it, difficult to make an impact or like you say are people a bit oh, yeah. confused about it or totally difficult in spain i, I it's just like i'm just focusing on uh, on uh, the states right now right. Mm -hmm. uh and, and now i i made a collaboration with a cross stitch kit with a, a metal poster designers mm -hmm. and we made a, a kit limited edition and it worked so well like in one day it was all sold Mm -hmm. sold out so i decided to make some for spain and but it's totally different i mean they will never buy one pattern and go to the shop and buy the material and do it themselves you know like like they do in uh i mean i sell at least one prize on my pattern uh, by day mm -hmm. in the states but nothing in spain almost nothing is that because they want everything pre-packaged like they expect the fabric and the materials i think cross stitch just have hasn't hit yet <laughs> i right. have to do it <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah well you can be the queen yeah of Spain. yeah, yeah. but embroidery yes there is a place in uh, barcelona maybe you know it it's uh dudua right it's a school it and mm -hmm. they have a lot of kind of embroidery with uh, senorita lilo and uh well uh, you know domestica yeah 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 so they have a lot of embroidery cross there and all those all those 
teachers they go to the school to and that they are i mean embroidery is is a thing now but mm -hmm. cross stitch is is too niche and niche. is it but is it like is it underground you know in the way that like even when I started or whatever 12 years ago it was kind of like you've got the subversive cross stitch so you've got the tradition but then you've got mm. the subversion I mean is there are there people younger people out there doing it and doing the fun stuff and the weird stuff or is it just like nah. I don't know anybody that cross stitch really yeah yeah oh. so actually when I explain I try to be because pattern design is half of my eating uh, money you know I mean mm. I say I'm a cross stitch pattern designer and I have to really explain for 10 minutes, show pictures and explain what they do with it so they understand what I'm doing. Yeah. So, or when I show it, they say, but, but how did you do? Is it a mesh? No, no, no. It took me three months. And, <laughs> and, and, and it's like, and why? Why do you do that? You could print it. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, but it will come. It will come. Yeah. I think now it's with, with uh, com confinement. Uh, with a uh, stay home situation yeah, 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 yeah. they are getting back to use their hands so mm. Mm. and are you seeing that is there a look because over here you know it's all like sourdough bread banana bread everybody's making things <laughs> everybody's like there's probably yeah. more kombucha happening than we know what to do with it. yeah but but you don't uh, gain weight with crustage so it should be better <laughs> that's true i should probably really refocus my own personal <laughs> in that case because you can't eat while you crustage <laughs> well you can but what it is is it becomes no. mixed media you know if you get food in your work <laughs> it's a different genre altogether I think. well that's a concept we should explore yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, so do you like do you think you have an aesthetic i mean we've yes. talked about that you don't but how would you describe it i i i think it's realistic and vibrant but i'm talking about my uh what i'm known for mm -hmm. not what i do with for you <laughs> it's just black arts what you do yeah. Really, really, yeah the real me black it out um <laughs> But uh, the important thing is I'm trying to keep colors under 20, mm -hmm. which is the trick thing. And I think it gives it uh, more contrast and more, you know, mm. it's more uh, contundente. Oh, more no, but I mean, I, yeah, yeah. I, I get what you mean, because the thing is, is it's quite easy to go for like 50 colors, lots yeah. of gradation. But actually, if you limit your palette, you're forced to make decisions, aren't you? Mm. Yeah. And, and, and I would say bizarre, too, because... <laughs> So I, you for example, I okay the the office patterns they sell really well, uh, but suddenly I drop a Britney Spears, uh, help me baby one more time portrait and it's like my most liked on mm -hmm. Instagram and it's something I did because I wanted not because I thought it would sell, mm -hmm. but now it's selling well. You know, it's it's always people say, I will never think I will find this on Etsy or. Somewhere. That's cool. Or, yeah. yeah. Or I tried to do it and I never, I didn't get to do it and, and you had it. So, Because yeah. I suppose you sometimes you worry that everybody has covered all the niches, aren't they? Because a lot of the obvious stuff is taken or whatever. Yeah, so. no, no. Well, my niche is the office. I mean, all the keywords are the office, but I'm trying to grow the collection, not only the office, because I don't want to do the, I love the office, but I don't want to only work yeah. on this so i'm doing music i'm doing other tv shows parks and uh, recreation hmm? parks and recreation. i have to but I, I need to finish a tv show before feeling legitimate to do yeah. the portraits you know so I have mary and see. i just watched the whole of parks and recreation for the second time we've already watched all seven series we watched oh them all God. again just now it <laughs> good. it's good the second yeah. time as well because you know, like there's one good bit between I don't know what series it is, like five and six or something, where Chris Pratt had gone and done the Marvel movies. And so, like, in the film, or in the show before that, uh, he's a bit of a slob, and then he comes back and he's like, yeah, <laughs> just stop drinking beer or whatever. <laughs> um, and do, how do you feel about the British office? Because yours is quite the American office that you focus on. I haven't seen it. <gasps> I know. I know. Controversial. <laughs> I, have the, I have the DVD pack. But mm. I don't have to play DVDs, huh? so but huh. but I want to see it. But I feel like that I want to see it all at once. Yeah, you know? mm. I, I need to put some limits around it, not mix with because I'm always binge watching The Office. Yeah, uh, in my life, so yeah, I know. 
it's, it's an interesting <laughs> one because obviously the first office, I think, was only two series, wasn't it? Two series, no. and then after that, the American one went for what seven mm -hmm. something. Found it. Is voice. it seven? I don't know. I'd have to Google it. I don't know. I just I just finished uh, Gilmore Girls and How I Met Your Mother, so I'm totally mixed in the numbers. Yeah, yeah. How I Met Your Mother was like fifteen series or something crazy, wasn't it? No, nine. Nine. Or ten. I never yeah. know. I did, again. I haven't watched that. I'm trying to think. What am I? I'm watching Umbrella Academy at the moment. Mm. That's quite good. I watch a lot of YouTube, to be honest. I'm, when, when I'm working, there's always YouTube on. And then yeah. uh, Mary and I watch specific things together. Other than that, I've got no chance, mm. really. Um, My issue is, is I try to see things that I can stitch while I, while I see them. So some things I don't have to look, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. I, I almost only see series that are already know the face and the characters so i don't have to look at the the screen so yeah. i can stitch or oh, nothing with yeah. subtitles i mean it's, it's oh, in no, foreign no, languages no. just yeah. gone right <laughs> there's a whole bit in kill bill volume two where she's le actually she's learning have you seen kill bill you must have done you were probably in it weren't you yeah but it's so long ago but in kill bill two she gets chained by a japanese guy and the version of Kill Bill that I watched was originally a Dutch version, I think. So when he's speaking in <laughs> Japanese and it's dubbed into English, it wasn't. Oh, no. <laughs> it was dubbed into Dutch. And so still for the life of me, I've got oh, no perfect. idea what I said. <laughs> that was very good. Um, do you find that you're... So, so you've got... You work as a graphic designer, but did you say you did like art training and stuff? No. Is that your education? Or just you've I... done a master's in... No, I only did in 2007, I, uh, I finished my first formation, which is graphic design and production, multimedia production. So video, 3D, graphic design, photography, a little bit of something. And then after that, you're supposed to specify. Right. I never did it uh, until last year. Right. But I didn't specify either because I, I did art direction, which is a mix of everything. Mm. So no, I'm... I, I just wondered whether that informed your design approach to cross stitch because like you say you're limiting <gasps> things and stuff but limiting like you said you know you limit your color palette for instance and so oh, that's yeah. a deliberate decision I just wondered how well the how do you approach oh, for money for, for the sake of my <laughs> stitchers mm. <laughs> so they don't have to buy all 50 colors no um I really think graphic design has um I mean, sometimes I think, why did I study graphic design? I mean, I, didn't, I don't really enjoy it lately, graphic design, pure graphic design. I still do it because it's easy. But, and then I think without graphic design, I would not do the patterns I do. Mm -hmm. I mean, the colors, the, the composition, sometimes I could, like, you remember when you sent a, the, a word for me? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's like, I can do that for half an hour, a little bit, a little, uh, 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 like three points. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like yeah it has to be perfect nobody will realize but that comes from graphic design <laughs> yeah and but i mean do you do you still always seek perfection are you there for hours are you one of those people that is always tweaking things and stuff or can you be like it's good enough and uh, not in craft stitch no <laughs> yes in graphic design uh, I, I, can. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean i can don't tell I my clients that. <laughs> because it's yeah for clients so yeah but uh no, cross stitch is my thing, so I mm -hmm. can do what I want. I can spend the time I want on it. So, do you think it'll always be your thing? Well, I don't know. I mean, do you feel like there's an evolution of it? Like, because, like you say, you you now do art direction and stuff, and you've got multimedia skills and stuff. Is there mm. a, is there an evolution of the whole thing? The important is, uh, you know, at the beginning I was. Uh, cross stitching and doing some normal em normal embroidery i'm not an embroiderer i don't know any special bond i just do straight stuff but uh, <laughs> i felt i was uh, participating to a lot of collective exhibitions and suddenly i could not think in another media i right. could not do drawing i could not do photography it, it was always the idea was coming in embroidery so I, I i i just can't think like that sometimes i think like a video but a lot of the video i do is project about around embroidery uh, I don't know I'm obsessed for now it's like this maybe it won't last but uh, for now but I actually, enjoy it a lot yeah you posted a couple of little videos on your YouTube there was one 
did you set fire to something on you set fire to something oh yeah yeah <laughs> that's for, for my portfolio for my yeah. ad director portfolio actually and okay. it's, it's actually all my all the creative director i presented my portfolio they said put more embroidery in your portfolio and you surely will be called by somebody for something in advertising but it, but it was like really unique just because of this video you enter and i'm setting fire on a cross stitch <laughs> It always makes me laugh because it's one of those things, cross stitch as well, particularly is one of those things that for some people is like what old ladies do country cottages and stuff. And there's this fine line where for other people, it's the most <laughs> avant-garde thing. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like old lady. Wow. Super cool. You know, and it, it's the same <laughs> stuff, but depending on the context, some people think it's just Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Maybe I'm an old lady. I'm, I am an old, old lady actually from when I was young, everybody um, called me old lady. Have but... you got, are you wearing slippers <laughs> at the moment? Ah, uh, no. No. Uh, well, yes, because it's cold. But. <laughs> <laughs> I would be wearing slippers, <laughs> given the chance, I think, but I'm significantly older. Um, and then how much does social media play a part in your, because I'm interested in like your, the business side of things as well. Like I think mm. it's interesting to talk about, you know, the way you do marketing and, and those sorts of things. Like what, what do you, are there social media platforms you prefer using? Are there ones that you know work well? Well, I could talk about that for hours. I have nobody well, that's good. to talk <laughs> about it. <so laughs> so just cut me when it's too much. Um, that's fine. The thing is, I was before I just decided to be a freelance, it was one year ago, I was working uh, for an, an, an airline mm -hmm. for five years. So I learned so much about marketing and marketing funnel and all the channels and how to treat every channel. Website is not the same as social media, as newsletter. So the good thing is, uh, although I had Etsy as a hobby, uh, I was growing, I was just applying when I was learning, you know, like gradually. So last year when I decided to just dedicate to embroidery and some things more, um, I had it ready. So, uh, newsletter, I don't have a lot of people, but I have an automate. I, I have content for one year. Yeah. So if you subscribe to my newsletter, you receive an email for one year. Nice. Um, How often do uh, you check that? Because I've got something similar. I've got like a seven stage email for the Mystery uh -huh. Stitch newsletter, but I have to keep checking it because it might accidentally go out of date. Oh, no, but I, I have it to present my wall collection. So it's mm -hmm. themed. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, I have a form, so I, the, I get feedback from them. I have a who I am. I, I mean, it's all made to not be outdated. I mean, every year evergreen, I have to yeah, check, yeah, yeah. but yeah, yeah, it's evergreen, yeah. Uh, and then Pinterest is uh, just uh, my it's jam. With what, yeah, gives me more, more, more visits. Really, it's mm. it's uh, when you use it well, it's unbelievable. Uh, Instagram and trying to do it. I'm not really good in uh, social stuff, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I'm trying because I like it. I like uh, Instagram, but I don't like the algorithm and having to think too much about what I do. So mm. I'm doing it, but I'm not becoming a slave. So I'm not growing really fast. But uh, yeah, I, I I knew really good people there, and and that's all for now. Right. Are you on Pinterest every day? No, I, I have it, uh, I use Tailwind. Mm -hmm. So just one, two it. hours a month, I just plan it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I have my, all my, my pins, my own uh, products on Smart Loop. So it's just, uh, right now I have it until end of December. Nice. Yeah. I just go for fun sometimes, yeah. <laughs> do you, I mean, do you, yeah, so that's the thing. Do you go on to Pinterest for your own interests or yeah. do you purely use it as a marketing tool? No, no, I, I love Pinterest, so I go some time to time, but I, I didn't like the idea of having to go and pin 20 images a day, Yeah, you know? I just want to go when I want, so. Mm. Do you do I, a lot I, of, I like, mention. batch producing of things? Is that, do you have that kind of mindset? Are you quite well organized about stuff? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I have talk. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I, I don't only pin on about embroidery. I, I have a lot of art and... Uh, yeah, everything I love, which could be rela re related to embroidery, but it's still natural. It's not that you enter and you see embroidery, in embroidery, blah, 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 embroidery, you know? Mm. It's a mix and you enter and you see my world and maybe you, you feel like it could work with your world and then you subscribe. 
yeah. but it's it's going really well lately yeah. and is that is that your funnel approach then it's almost like show your broad interest with the hope mm. of bringing people into your yeah yeah that's a classic yeah but it works mm. yeah. yeah definitely mm -hmm. i think and it is it's quite insane the the stats you can get from pinterest like with the mr x ditch one i used to think called if this then that and what that would yeah. do is posts that were tagged at certain things would automatically go onto certain boards mm. and stuff like that but like you're getting like a million monthly viewers or whatever it's like insane yeah yeah, yeah. I, I got to three million right uh, uh just and and one time i got to four million just because i i created a if this and that for mm -hmm. school right. i created a board uh, uh which which will take all the new memes from uh, one my favorite reddit for memes mm -hmm. memes Memes, yeah. Memes, and uh, memes in Spanish. Memes is good. I like. <laughs> and uh, another page, I don't remember which one. And it was for school, so I just yeah, I, I created this, so you get a board with all the best memes of the world, and it worked for two days, and then I realized I was pinning so much, like it was <laughs> pinning a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so I I cut it, but I had four millions for one month just because uh, of this of the of those two days. So I think it's important to pin. I, I don't say 50 a day, I, I do 14 a day. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, and it's enough. I tried more, but re, re, uh, I mean, constant. Yeah. You know? yeah. Every day. Mm. Yeah. I think that's the thing though. I guess the, do you think it's important to focus? Like that, that's quite a focus strategy, I think, for the amount of time it would take to do those things and stuff like that. Do you um, then, you're quite content with you're working on instagram but facebook twitter whatever you're, you're happy to just like go where you need to i would love to to find time and uh and uh, patient mm. to have facebook for example because a lot of people is coming from group on facebook where they they share finished piece and they come i see the the drugs but i don't want to divide my attention in too many places because mm. it gets just a work you know I yeah. want it to be, I want, I want to start making some videos uh, like you're doing because, because now I'm launching a, a collection here in Spain, mm -hmm. a kids, cross kids connection. And I took the opportunity to make a lot of pictures, a lot of videos. Uh, I, I took 200 pictures yesterday. I have to edit everything now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but uh, that, that's an important thing I think on marketing because I'm creating my website to go a bit away from Etsy. Mm -hmm. lately I'm, i i don't see enough transparency on 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 the incoming visits on the acquisition right. so i need to see more and i want to start to do some ads and uh, i don't know i want to take more control have a blog so i'm building my website and i was checking all the embroiderer website the, the, the one i admire the most and i was like okay i have to do it well so i will see what they do and try to do the same mm -hmm. and then suddenly i realized that they they are all quite the same already mm. i mean th there is really a tendency you know so i decided to do <laughs> totally the contrary yeah uh, and it's yeah it, it, let's see if it works but that's my strategy to 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 really show my my bizarreness or my my strangeness mm -hmm. in the website. So it, maybe you remember it because because it's it's not white with uh, pictures and plants. Yeah, I the plants. Sorry, Honestly, I love you. No, that's fine. <laughs> Look, I've got my cunningly arranged. I've even <laughs> nicked a light from my daughter's bedroom that is a different color because I've even got the microphone that everybody that ever recorded a podcast has got. Um, true, true, true. <laughs> yeah, it's, fine. it's kind of like, mm, all right. Um, yeah, no, but I think that's interesting. Do you spend much time looking at analytics? Do you do much data stuff? Uh, not anymore. I used to. And now I just uh, have an Excel when I report. I have my, my own page when I input analytics from all the channels. And I do it what, one time a month. Yeah. But when I, when I don't feel good, I go there and I check. Because, for example, on Etsy, I feel like this year is not going that well. Right. Uh, uh, I, I, and I, I, don't, I mean, March was amazing, but then it just dropped. Um, but then I look, I look compared to last year, and it's just the biggest improvement. Yeah. But if you just focus on the day, on the last thirty days, you you can get really depressed. Yeah. You, know? yeah. you have to take some distance sometimes. So it's better to do it one time a month. 
And definitely, I think when you're starting out, right, there's a tendency to be like checking at once an hour and stuff like yeah, that. And you can just yes. die from doing that. Kind totally of. addictive. Yeah. yeah. And that, now with the website, I'm really looking forward to see some results because now it's my place. You mm -hmm. know, if, if somebody goes there, it's because I made an effort. It, because Etsy is doing an uh, advertising, but I, mm. I don't decide what they advertise. I don't know how much money they put. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. They've got red hot SEO, I suppose. That's part of the thing. I remember once trying to do an experiment of selling things on Etsy with the hope of it would just pull my brand up through the search rankings or whatever. And it, in the end, I didn't do it. But I think that's their strict. Like I, I've been on Etsy since 2008 and I've got embarrassing sales, like about 400 or something. It's pitiful. But my life has evolved away from being someone that sells patterns to being something else. But I'm just conscious that what they used to be and what they are now, particularly they're floated on the stock exchange and stuff like that. Mm. feel like there's going to come a point when they'll just have to do whatever it takes to maintain a profit. So your chances of making a clear run at it are limited. It's, it's a bit colder, I think. Mm. Yeah. Even in the forums and I, I don't feel this. I mean, I don't feel the same as before. But anyway, I think you get to a point, I mean, I will keep Etsy forever because that, that's the place I, I knew my best teachers. I mean, we have a group, we talk, you know, but, uh, but it's a step you have to do when it goes well, you, you, you do your website. And yeah. now that we are in the time where you have to create content, mm. uh, you cannot create content on Etsy. I mean, you can put videos now, but it's better and it's only for really for your listing. Actually, we could put some uh, content on Etsy on the listing. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. it's interesting. With the, I know that with the magazine, there's a limit on the amount of digital file size that you can share and stuff like that. So they're definitely not, they're not moving with those times, are they? No. But, but now they put that on your listing photos, you can right. add a video. Okay. Because uh, a video always sells better. But yeah. what if you hack that and you put a video of you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I might like, put my like daily blogs up there. You. Daily blog, yeah. <laughs> 5p. <laughs> see what happens. But well, now, I think it's something new. So it's surely promoting the one that used the video and the novelties. I, I should do something with that. But yeah. But I, I think, I mean, but it's everything. interesting what you're saying because you're taking like classic marketing funnels, you know, present yourself, mm. drive people to your site and then drive them to your own platform, which is like best practice. So in a way, it doesn't really matter how weird you are on your platform. People have come there because they're interested in you. And as long as they can buy from you and you don't frighten them. Yeah. Maybe you do. Maybe you do frighten them. I'm frightened. Just at the <laughs> thought of it. I let you know what happens. Uh -huh. The thing is before I, I didn't. And now I'm, I'm getting to almost 100 patterns. So I feel like I have something to fill the website before it was like, okay, you enter there and you see. 50 and then it's not what you are looking for uh, now it's okay now okay <laughs> so that concept that we had earlier of whether good enough is good enough you're definitely still no. yeah, you're like, yeah, no, yeah it has yeah. to be perfect i'm trying i'm trying now that i've got 100 <laughs> or whatever i mean you should like the video thing's interesting and the reason i'm doing those daily vlogs is because of like the new shorts format with youtube trying to go after tiktok and instagram reels mm. and all those sorts of things so i think there's a lot of growth to be found there if you do those upright yeah. videos that are under a minute and it's definitely yeah. something I, I could see it on Instagram with the reels, which mm. is the talk. I never had TikTok. And uh, when it started on Instagram, I tried it and I just got addicted because I love doing videos, uh, mainly like a bit abstract videos. And suddenly I could represent my day and then suddenly I represent my process. And it's, it's what works the best on Instagram. Mm. I mean, the most liked content I had and I had Instagram from the beginning. So mm. it, it's really, it's crazy. Mm. Yeah. I sort of struggle with Instagram in that I've got a large number of followers from Mr. X stitch, but it doesn't translate even to a large number of visitors no. to my website or anything. And again, no. I suppose like because it's owned by Facebook, I feel like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. What's your thoughts on that sort of thing? I don't know. I think newsletter is the best. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's because you build a relation, you, I don't know. You... It's classic. It's a classic, isn't it? And it's interesting. It Even I know if you're going to do one thing to earn some money, it's go and write an email newsletter. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Every time. Uh, uh, Instagram, I feel like when it works well, 
suddenly is, is stop working because then you put money so it keeps working. Mm. I mean, it works with the addiction of the viewers, but it works with your ad addiction too. Yeah. So it's uh, I like it and I hate it. Do you uh, do you have this is random, but do you have your notifications on? Because a long time no. ago I turned all mine off. You see me? Oh like, no. Yeah. No, no, no. You see, because you smile, you don't seem to have that anxiety that I feel. No, when they're like, I, I'm a really anxious person. Well, I'm working on it, and that's why I love cross stitch because it's calmed me down. But uh, I, I, I don't know. Actually, my phone, I love it because it has a, an option where it cuts everything. It cuts the, the incoming calls too. And now mm. that I'm working again, I have to get used to take it away because I didn't even know how we, how was the sound on my phone. You know. <laughs> I'm really, I like focus. Yeah. What's your, so yeah, let's talk about mindfulness and like, let's, what is, you said cross stitch is good for you. Mm. Tell me, tell me all about that. I think it's first because it's really organized. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you do it well. Do you, um, do you, do you have all your uh, colors in like bobbins in boxes before you start? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I actually made a box uh, for the amount of, you know, I have to do a new one because now I have much more, but. <laughs> yeah, I should do a tutorial on that one because it's amazing. I can show you later. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I think it's, I'm a person that is uh, afraid by losing control and cross stitch. The place where you can lose control is you, when you create the design, but then when you stitch it, stitch it you're just following it. You're following a plan, you know, mm -hmm. and you're creating something beautiful. And yeah, I think it, it's the cocktail of both things. It's quite funny, isn't it? Because the people can either be overwhelmed by the crosses or secure inside the crosses. Mm. Mm -hmm. so you can it's feel true. discomfort in there. Yeah. And I've yeah. done a little bit of free embroidery from time to time, but I sometimes feel that it's almost like you get too much choice there. It's like, yeah. I kind of want to stick to it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 for me, I'm something, if I don't cross stitch something in two or three days, I just feel overwhelmed. And I need it to come down, yeah. Mm. Do you do any other kind of meditative stuff? No. Mm. You don't need to, do you? <laughs> you got cross stitch. So, you know, I think that's it. Do you, I mean, do you have many like friends or anything that do cross stitch in real life? Cross -stitch? No. Uh, my sister is get, my two sisters are, are getting addicted. Uh, my best friend, uh, she, she's, she cross stitch, but it's phases, you know, like maybe she will stitch for one week and then nothing in one year. Mm -hmm. Who else? Well, I mean, I consider other people that buy my <laughs> patterns friends because then when we build a relation for real, you know, because mm. there is a story I, I used to say is I, the first uh, product that was not a kit I sold on, on Etsy, it was a friend's uh, cross stitch mm -hmm. of a scene where Phoebe, uh, you know, the no, image, no imagination house. And it's uh, Monica, she has mm -hmm. uh, her ha dollhouse mm -hmm. from when she was young and she invites Phoebe to play. And Phoebe brings a dinosaur and a giant dog and Monica is not happy with that. But, <laughs> uh, so I, I, I made a cross stitch of that and it's really, really freak, mm -hmm. a geek or I don't know the name because it's a mix of everything and you really have to understand and remember. And, and, and I did it and I showed it to my ex-boyfriend and I said, wow, look, uh, I think... I, I think it's amazing. And he said, oh, it's not even funny. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, maybe, okay. Maybe I, <laughs> I got too, too emotion with my own creation. But I put it on Etsy just in case. Mm. And I sold like four in a, like stitched one. So it, it was 50 euros, you know, it was not a pattern. Okay. And, and then suddenly I felt like, okay, maybe the people around me, they don't understand me. Uh, but there is somebody in the world that is not my friend and, and they like it. And I would mm. give it as a present to somebody or, or it will be something. So that's okay for me. I don't need yeah. to have the clothes. <laughs> it's times like that when you're like, actually the internet's all right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm introvert, so I love internet. <laughs> <laughs> but, no. but I would love to have uh, friends to drink beer and cross stitch. I mean. Yeah, it is quite good. I've, it, it, well, it's weird, like, because I've done that a few times and, I, you know, I've done workshops and whatnot, but... When you get into cross stitch, you kind of stop talking to people. So a lot of the time you could be there with a bunch of friends, but really you're not really talking after a while because <laughs> you're just in the space or whatever. Or I used yeah. to freak out about teaching school children because they'd be really lively. And then about three quarters of an hour later, they'd all be really quiet. 
<laughs> what's going on or like when I first used to start teaching grown-ups and then they go all quiet because you do and I'd be like are they really angry with me did I do something <laughs> wrong and they're just all like oh, 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 oh. <laughs> focused <laughs> um cross stitch as an art form discuss as you... an art form mm. yeah there's no discussion it is because <laughs> yeah. some people would say it's just a craft to which or you know no no uh, I'm not, I don't agree. No. I mean, why? What would then, you say uh, is the definition of like art and craft and stuff? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Come on. Um, I don't know, actually. For me, anything you do with your hands with an intention of beauty or not beauty, but transmit a message, mm -hmm. it's art. Yeah. Hmm. And do you find then that the intention overrides the aesthetic so it doesn't matter what it looks like if you're putting a message out there yeah yeah and is that something that informs your approach to designing like you know you you make patterns do you make patterns? are you bothered whether they sell or not or you're just like i make exactly. a pattern i'm gonna put that yeah. out yeah but I think that's why I like it so much. I mean, uh, uh, in graphic design, you receive uh, at least uh, 30, no, 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 change this, change this, change this, mm. you know? So you get, I get home and I, <laughs> I do this. And uh, if somebody likes it, that's okay. If not, you know. A great but man wants to think. Yeah. It's, it's, a, well, it's a material, but it's art. That's what I find interesting, you know, because working with people like Leah Emery, Ellen Schindeman, Jacqueline Royal, some of the people who are artists mm -hmm. that use it as a medium, and they're the same thing. You know, what they're doing is they're producing things for mass consumption, but really it's like a one-off for mass consumption, as yep. opposed to, I guess, if you look at the big commercial outfits that sell patterns across the whole of the world, they tend to just go right for the middle at what will have the most sale appeal, <laughs> and therefore it's quite flowery. Yeah. I don't know, because it's like when I tell you, when I do it something for you, I go totally different from when I have on Etsy. But at the same time, when I fancy cross stitch is something, is the style I have on Etsy more than something like that, you know, which is uh, most, it's, it's simple and mm -hmm. uh, it's, but I get bored. I needed to have 10 colors at the same time and uh, do parking and, and see a face appearing. Mm. And for me, it's still art, although yeah. it's uh, being better, yeah. But do you think there's something about with those other designs because you can finish them relatively quickly? Do you think that's part of the process? Do you get the do you enjoy finishing things or do you prefer starting things and then just leave them? But it's a contradiction. I mean, I, I the the whole time I'm stitching, I feel like my body wants to finish because it's for me it's painful. I have back pain. I have yeah. But when I finish, it's like, uh, oh, what, what what's next? Yeah. <laughs> I felt the same playing Final Fantasy VII when I was in my 20s and I spent 150 hours doing it and then was like, oh. What now? I haven't even got a bloody cross stitch to give to someone. Do you know what I mean? You're just like, honestly, oh, that's why now I'm like, I wouldn't believe that now I'm the guy that watches other people play video games sometimes while I'm working, but I'm like, at least I'm making a thing and still kind of getting the kicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well it's, it grows the brain to play video games. It does. Well, not the ones I play. I think, to be honest. <laughs> Maybe you learn uh, some pixel art. Oh, well, yeah, you see, that's what, that's definitely something. There was a really mm. good thing called Pixel Art Academy that's run by a guy called Retronator. And basically, mm. it's a, a place where you can learn to do pixel art, but you're in oh, a sort nice. of pixel art world as well. It's free to do it, I think. Oh. You can donate. What, like, what you, is it called? Uh, just if you put in, uh, if you Google Pixel Art Academy, and then it's just a little process. And, and the thing is, the guy's made this project and it's huge. and so it's not like it's a complete education. There's like the start of an education because it's maybe mm. taken him like two years to do it. But each space that you go into, it's a bit like kind of point and click adventure style. You have to type commands nice. and stuff like that. But at the same time, there are elements that you learn about the practice of pixel art, you know, turning, you know, huh. it's almost like, yeah, making things that are very few pixels and very few colors and, yeah. and learning a bit of the history and stuff like that. And I think that, it's definitely because I don't get any time to do any cross stitch design. That's why I don't really ever put my designs in because I don't rate myself as well as I rate the other people I work. <laughs> so, you know, it'd be nice to get the time to spend and just almost go back to the basics and go, right, I'm going to yeah. draw a tomato. I'm going to like, you know, work my way up and stuff like that. I've got, uh, where's it gone? Oh, yeah. 
because I had a bit of a run of it. And so I bought a book. It's called The Masters wow. of Pixel Art. And this is volume three. So this is all like the modern people that are doing it and stuff like that. So there's, there's a couple that are like um, looking at all the old school video games and stuff and the yeah. history of it. And then these are just all like people with their modern takes on it and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, obviously shows you some really crap pictures to look at there. But for instance, um, 8 Pixel Jubilee, who was the first person that I used in her, uh, one of my ex stitch alongs or whatever, she's in there and stuff. Wow. And just, what I love about these kind of people is it's like, they're, they're kind of limitless. Like when you design cross stitch and you start in the world of cross stitch, it's almost like you're born of limitation. Whereas with these guys, they're just like, oh, I'll just build whatever. And the downside, I suppose, is that a cross stitch that would be one of those would be like, poof, yeah, take you about four years yeah. to make or something. Can you imagine? Like oh my god! But I mean, I do. I feel like that's such a great revival of the same pixelated yeah. format. It's definitely yeah. got merit. Actually, I, I'm thinking now. Let's do therapy. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I didn't have a TV when I was young and I was a child and I didn't have video games. Uh, but my cousin had, she had a Nintendo uh, NES. Mm -hmm. I was so obsessed with playing the NES and uh, with Super Mario and Bubble Bubble. Mm -hmm. So maybe those pixels influence me yeah. in my nowadays fashion. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's almost weird because there'll be a generation of young people who are maybe teenagers now where the graphics are so good they don't even see the pixels. You yeah. know, you just don't because it's all like triangles and polygons rendered yeah, in real yeah, time. Yeah. Whereas True. there's a cutoff point of like Sega Mega Drive, maybe early PlayStation. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And that's kind of like where it ends or whatever. But mm -hmm. the first computer I ever got was the Sinclair ZX Spectrum, which was like generations before that. And the first game I ever had was called Splat. And you were just this little X in the middle of the screen that you had to navigate around as very blocky walls. It's like black X, white background, blocky walls that would move and you had to avoid them. The most immersive experience of my life. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like Pong. It's like when you've got nothing, your yeah, brain yeah, yeah, takes yeah. the rest of it and puts it in. Now <laughs> That's watching, mindfulness, you see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm watching some guy play like Miles Morales Spider-Man on the PS5 and I may as well be uh, there. And it takes all the like the joy out of it or something. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, okay. Are there other cross stitch designers that you admire? <sighs> are there other designers that you admire? Are there other artists that you admire? You know, I don't know. Maybe cross stitch designers is a difficult one. I feel like no, your lady is probably so yeah. focused on your patch of the world that maybe you don't. Because if you don't trawl around on Facebook in all the groups, you're not going to know all the people. I only know all the people because I keep looking out for them to see whether they want to be in the magazine or whatever. So let's, let's dial that back and let's go. Do you have favorite artists slash designers? I, I mean, this question for me is tricky because it's like when they say, what music do you like? And like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there is one cross teacher on uh, Instagram. I don't know if, if she's famous. Uh, Plastic Little Cover. Mm -hmm. You know yeah, her? I've heard of like, her. Like her, her design is just like, how did you do that? It's, it's, it's and such low points and the color is perfect. And, and it's, I really want to stitch it when you see it and it looks easy. Mm. Yeah, I, I like her. I don't have any name now. I feel bad. It's okay. I, I can edit it in afterwards. Or we'll, <laughs> I'll put a link in the show notes, which usually means I'll forget to put a link in the show notes. Yeah. <laughs> I do a lot of, I'll write it down. <laughs> that was a good one. Um, what about um, what about artists and stuff then? Are you a bit of everything or are there certain, like for me, for instance, um, it turns out I really like people like Alphonse Mucker and stuff like that because of their outlining. And I realize that that is very much inspired by the fact I've read a lot of comic books. Yeah. It's weird. So, you know, line and color are important to me. I, actually, I went to an exhibition of him in Madrid like five years ago and I realized he was the first graphic designer. Yeah, because he was yeah. doing posters, photography, murals, illustration, packaging. So I was so motivated after that exhibition. Yeah, yeah. there was that just. Uh, um, yeah, I can't remember the name of what the blooming movement was now, but it was all part of that thing of like the beauty of the mundane, wasn't it? Beautiful cigarette adverts and all those sorts of things. <laughs> yeah, it was like make things beautiful. I have an artist. Uh, I don't know if I can pronounce her name. I'm I'm obsessed with her and, and uh, actually with doing masks lately. 
-hmm. I don't have time. Uh, Damselfrau. Okay. Damselfrau, I will show you. Okay. Do you know right. her? Yeah, no, I don't know her, but she's pretty bad. <laughs> so uh, I'm just obsessed with masks lately, you see. Mm -hmm. So she mixes embroidery wow, with, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm more following that kind of stuff. It's not pure embroidery. It's usually uh, um, joining stuff. Yeah, mixed media, Beauty, kind of yeah. sculpture, 3D. Yeah. I see that. That's interesting as well, because I guess you can use embroidery to present a face that you can hide behind. Yes, <laughs> that, that's my, what I want to... I, if I go out of patterns, I would really like to explore this part of mm -hmm. masks. With yeah. joining embroidery with material, anything. Just, you know, I, actually I'm keeping all the stuff uh, I draw for embroidery to do an embroidery mask. Mm -hmm. with <laughs> something more conceptual and not for selling and just something that co comes out for me. Yeah. And, yeah. That's, you see, that's the interesting thing. And I guess I think that's what I was sort of like aiming at earlier when I asked where you're going. Because a lot of the time you find, you know, some people are happy to just sit in the world of design other people are, are very full of expression and there's an artistic bent to them. And I feel like you're latterly mm -mm. because you've got all these different strings to your bow. So it makes sense oh, yeah. that somewhere down the line, there would be an evolution and it might be, you know, I could see you like going, even if you did like an online course with the Royal School of Needlework and you learnt a certain type of stitch or whatever, and then you go off and explore that direction or whatever. I yeah. I, happening in I, here. I want to try that. I want to try. Um, I'm, do, I'm, I'm doing giant cross stitch. I'll show you when it's done. It's it just is so painful for my back, but it's something like that. And uh, I'm, on, on I want like to peg try. Pegboard or something. Like? On pegboard or something? Like you do? Is it like on? When oh. you say giant cross stitch, what what are you making? No, let me show you. Wait. Come on. Holy moly! Sorry, you will have to edit. That's fine. So it's wow. something like that, yeah. but uh, I run out of, uh, so it's just giant cross stitch. It looks that better than of, it looks on screen. Yeah. That looks like kind of chicken wire for gardens, but plastic yeah. or something. That is, that's it. I, want yeah. to, I, was, I was too ambitious with that one because you know my back, yeah. it's not easy to stitch, it's so rigid. So I should try with a smaller one, but I started, so I will, I'll have to. I mean, do you have something. that fixed on an easel or something? Or do yeah, you I tried everything. I tried on the wall. I tried with fat stuff in my room. I tried on the bed. Mm. I didn't find the best way. I need just more place, maybe. Or with somebody, you know, who yeah. takes it. Yeah. yeah, that's what you need. Yeah, uh, I'm introvert, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, Keith Clark, who's been in the mag and stuff, he stitches sometimes on vinyl. He's got a vinyl thing, so it's. Oh, bigger yeah, than so cross stitch it's... but smaller you know he did all like the fresh prints of bel air and stuff oh that's now... a cross stitch i like actually but yeah it's, to, it's similar to mine so I yeah yeah, yeah and he's also he's, <laughs> he's got a good curation like the things that he picks are very smart mm, as well true. i think that's yes. similar as well but yeah i mean i've what have i done i've done it on like chain link fence before but the problem is is that you know you can't get that full like the challenge you've got there i guess is you're covering the whole thing aren't you so you can't see through it exactly so you've got to, i mean what is that like six ply wool or something you're using uh, six what six ply so is it like six strands of wool that you're using or something at the same time oh no it's it's a big uh, wool okay oh really so it's just one. a one bit okay yeah uh, it's just a test, but uh, yeah, I want to finish it. And I'd like to try normal embroidery on biggest format. I need to, sometimes I feel like I want to be more spontaneous, mm -hmm. you know, to do something like that won't last that much and not thinking that much, yeah. but I always get back to cross stitch. <laughs> so. <laughs> I did a bit of yarn bombing kind of, we used to have an allotment and I did some on a fence there and I just did like kind of graffiti, but just straight line stuff. Cause after a while I was like, that's easy than going, I need to plan out every single cross or watch it, whatever. Yeah. I think, you know, that was quite freeing because again, you got an immediacy of result, which is quite nice. So yes. it was easy to finish. But um I'm fine away. Yeah, you're canny. You're canny last. <laughs> um do what is I'm just trying to think here, what is your one top tip for an aspiring cross stitch designer? If you were if someone was new and they were like, Mel, Mel teach me wisdom and you said i've got a, a jet plane to get on in a minute so i've only got one piece of wisdom uh try to do at least one one a week one yeah. design a week yeah. yes 
Yes, I, I can see because I'm, I'm now improving all my patterns from the beginning. So with the technique, with the colors, with the kind of grid, I mean, and I can see the difference. And that's because I've been doing at least two a month mm -hmm. and lately one, one a week. I, I really see the difference. And you, and you could, and my style is I'm using a cross stitch software, so I'm not doing pixel art, you know, but in other, I'm combining Photoshop and uh, Mac stitch. Yeah. And I can see the difference from mm -hmm. the first ones. And yeah. So, so practice. Yeah. And what's your sweet spot? Like, do you use color blocks and symbols? What do you like for grids? What are those? How, I, how use, I use the three of them because I made a, a a form to know what people prefers and there's no preference. Yeah, interesting. So I export the three of them. Yeah, which is smart and that's a good thing to do. <laughs> Actually, in the next issue of the magazine, I've decided I'm going to have an appendix at the end. So the magazine will be like normal, but mm. then at the end, every single version of the chart will mm. be in like the symbol only version just at the back as well. Yeah. So you can print them out. Yeah, I, I use symbol only uh, on the iPad, but mm. uh, I know people like symbol on color. And yeah. some people like color. I don't know why. I mean, I don't know why. They, they have good memory. They don't, I don't know. Maybe they just <laughs> like a challenge or something. That's <laughs> um, yeah. And so, yeah. And then, so you do your designing on Mac Stitch. Mac Stitch, yes. So what, like pre-produce in Photoshop, get an image you like and then bang I it love, through the software? Yeah, I, I have a lot of Photoshop, then Mac Stitch, then retouch on Mac Stitch until I have less than... I try 15 colors, maximum mm -hmm. 20. Yeah. Not too big either because people use a 11 point Ida, so they end with a portrait like this and it's like, oh, that's, what, that's not what I <laughs> was expecting. White, quite that big. <laughs> Which is good for a jacket, that's what I say. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. 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 And, then, and then what about the music? Because I haven't really talked about that, but I was quite fascinated to go, and then she's got back. <laughs> yeah, actually, I had a metal band until two years ago, three years ago. Yeah, it's not enough time. And now it's a normal band, but it's not normal because we still uh, sing. Keeping it weird. Uh, yeah, but now it's a bit. Uh, no, there's no gigs, so mm. we're just uh, preparing the new album. It's it's almost ready. We're just getting prepared to release it when we can play again. Okay. But yeah. When it's perfect. It is. <laughs> and what's the name of the band so that all my four followers on YouTube can go and buy it? It's Drema. Mm. I show you because you will forget to. Oh no, it's inverted. No, that's called D R A E M A. Am I right? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Very good. D R A Y M A. Oh, Y M A. And you are on YouTube and all that. Oh, yeah, we're well. everywhere. You know, marketing, applying to cross stitch, and the band. So, <laughs> yeah, excellent. Somewhere there'll be a, an official Draymar cross stitch pattern on some. Uh, we music. have a, actually one of the stickers we made was a cross stitch of two unicorns singing. And <laughs> okay. see, every album cover should have the ability for there to be a kit to go along with it, huh? It's, it's, um, I don't, I'm, I feel bad for it, but the first cover, it was about to be an embroidery, but I never finished it. And it was not cross stitch, it was a unicorn in the jungle on fire, but it was too much. <laughs> I think I'll finish it someday and we create a disc for it. And then, uh, yeah, when you're doing your greatest hits and it can be one of the yeah, covers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's cool. Well, listen, that's been a, a hell of a good hour yeah. of chatting with you. I hope that's been all right. I have to sort of like do this thing now because it's almost like I'm recording it. So it's like an official thing, but would you, just do it like a, a thing, tell people where they can find you online. Yeah, oh, uh, where, where will you release this? Because my website is not ready, it's not perfect yet. But in the future it will be, won't it? And YouTube's yeah. gonna be around at least for the rest of eternity, so. Well, metalrise.com. Yeah. And on Instagram, metalrise. And on and Pinterest. And Pinterest, yeah, it's metalrise. I mean, this name is unexistent, so I yeah. had it on all the channels. With no so problem. Google Melorize and your life will be better. <laughs> or, or stranger. <laughs> She's still better. That's cool. <laughs> well, that was that. Thanks for watching the designer discourse video with Melorize. Be sure to find her at melorize.com where you can enjoy, well, she's got like a hundred cross stitch patterns to pick from. And I think you'll agree, she's just a fantastic designer and someone who 
is going to be a real asset to the industry, particularly if she manages to smash the modern cross-stitch world in Spain. Amazing. Great opportunity there. Really good conversation. I really like working with Mel. She's a great person. Um, thanks for taking time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like the video if you liked it and subscribe to the channel as there will be more designer discourses on the way. We've already done one with Maria Diaz and there are many more planned. So thanks for being here. I hope it has been a good hour and I hope I see you again soon. Take care everybody. Until the next time, happy stitching.